washing at the gym short. Hello friends, my name is Gabby, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be starting on a very exciting reading vlog where I'm gonna be reading four highly anticipated new release books. We have a few different genres here. We have a few highly anticipated romances as well as some new thrillers. One of the books I'll be reading for this vlog includes She's Not Sorry by Mary Kubica. This is actually a thriller arc that I have and this book goes on sale April 2nd. But this is a book that I've been highly anticipating because I was a huge fan of the book Local Woman Missing from this author. And even though this author has been a little bit hit or miss for me in the past. This is just one that I've been really looking forward to. I'm also going to be reading the outrageously popular book Bride by Allie Hazelwood. And this is one that I have been highly anticipating, even though paranormal romance is not typically my favorite, but also because I've enjoyed so many of the romance books from Allie Hazelwood, I've just been so curious to read this one. And because, you know, I was a pretty big Twilight fan back in the day, like back when I was in middle school, I haven't read those books in years. So like, I don't know how I'd feel about them now, but because this book involves vampires and werewolves. I just thought it would be a fun reading experience, so I do read this one in this vlog. I also read A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams in this vlog. This is another romance that I've been highly, highly anticipating because Tia Williams is the same author as Seven Days in June, which is a romance book that I read a number of years ago now that I really enjoyed, so I've been highly anticipating the next romance book from this author. And then lastly for this vlog, I also ended up reading The Fury by Alex Michaelides because this one is one of my most anticipated thriller books of the year. This book also happens to to be my March book troop book club pick. So if you want to see the live show discussion, that's going to be happening very soon. I'll have the link down below where you can click to save the link and turn on the reminders and all that. But I am so excited that I finally got around to reading this in this video because both previous thrillers that this author has published, both The Silent Patient and The Maidens, were both five stars for me. I know that's an unpopular opinion maybe, but I've loved everything that this author has come out with so far. So that's why I couldn't have been more excited to read this one. So yeah, those are the four books that I'm going to be reading for today's reading vlog. I'm so excited. But before we do jump into the reading vlog, I just wanted to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is a new sponsor on this channel, and it's BookBolt. Because BookBolt is the most comprehensive, low-content book publishing software on the market today. Because from your idea to the creation, BookBolt can assist you in all avenues of the book publishing business, and they can turn your concept into a best-selling story. You can become a published author on Amazon with zero upfront cost. And through creative design and analytics provided to you by BookBolt, they have enabled thousands of self-published authors across the globe to sell books to the millions of Amazon shoppers who are looking to buy your products. You will be able to create these books in less than 10 minutes and anyone from anywhere in the world can do this. So because you'll be partnering with Amazon, you will be responsible to perform the product research, book creation, and the book listing. But then Amazon will do all the hard work because Amazon will do the printing and the shipping of your book and they'll even handle the customer service. And BookBolt is there to help you with your research and to help you create these books for only the cost of a cup of coffee every month. And there's no experience needed. And BookBolt is gonna make it super easy for you. They're gonna walk you through step by step for the process of how to do this. And you will not be risking any money because they are not paying Amazon anything upfront. All you need is an Amazon KDP account, which is free, and a BookBolt membership. New customers not only get a free trial, plus you get 20% off the monthly fee for life. You can check out BookBolt by using the link down in my description. And don't forget to use my code GabbyReads while you're signing up. Thank you so much to BookBolt for sponsoring today's video and let me send you back to about a week ago when I started on these books. Okay, hello, good morning. Sorry for the weird lighting coming into my car right now, but I wanted to update you because last night I started reading She's Not Sorry, and last night I got to page 104, so I feel like I'm making decent progress. So far, the story is going just fine. I'm invested in the mystery, but I'm not, like, obsessed with the story. Like, it hasn't really grabbed me yet. So in this story, we're following this woman named Megan, and she's working as an ICU nurse, and one day they bring in this woman named Caitlin, who had recently just, like, jumped off this bridge, like, apparently trying to kill herself, but she she didn't exactly end up killing herself because now she's in the ICU and she's like in a coma and so she's one of the nurses that's like working on you know taking care of this girl and helping this girl there's also a situation where like in the neighborhood where Megan lives there's been a ton of like break-ins recently with like these men robbing women and so she's a little bit nervous about that because at her place it's just her and her daughter like she's a single mother taking care of her teenage daughter and her daughter is home alone a lot of nights because she works as an ICU nurse and then it's also about how she goes 
goes to this like divorce support group and when she goes to the divorce group she actually meets one of her friends that she used to go to high school with it's this girl named Natalie but Natalie has recently gotten divorced and every time she sees her she keeps showing up with these like bruises and she's like wondering like oh my gosh is this guy abusive like what's going on with her so there's quite a few different things happening in this story I think the biggest mystery of this book right now is with the patient you know like this girl who came into the ICU you're trying to figure out like did she actually jump like was she trying to commit suicide or could she have been pushed from the bridge like did somebody try to kill her there's been this like weird man showing up at the hospital that like they don't know who he is but he keeps like checking in on her just to see her like he doesn't even talk to her he just stares at her through the window so they think like oh maybe this guy was involved and then I think it's also a little bit strange because uh this girl Caitlin her family just like absolutely loves this nurse Megan and they keep talking to her about secret shit the dad will be like oh he'll like reveal something to her and then he'll be like don't tell my wife and I'm like what the heck <laughs> it does seem a little bit weird to me personally but I guess I'll just have to suspend my disbelief for like how trusting this family is with like their personal and private information with this nurse I mean maybe people do really open up to their nurses like I don't I wouldn't know but I just find it a little hard to believe that the dad would be like confessing things about their daughter to the nurse and like stuff that the mom doesn't even know so anyways I find that to be a little bit strange but I am about a third of the way through. I'm liking it so far. I'm just not obsessed with it. Like, I'm waiting for it to really hook me because I feel like once it hooks me, I'll be able to fly through the pages a lot faster because so far, like, it's taken me almost an entire day to read those 100 pages. Like, I could not focus on this yesterday. I kept getting so distracted. So hopefully that's not the case today. Um, I just decided to come down to the gym early. I rarely ever come down to the gym in the morning because usually it kind of makes me nauseous to, like, go to the gym in the morning. But it's about 10... 30 right now i just finished up at the gym i got here at about 9 45 which is crazy and now i think i'm gonna go home i'm probably gonna like either try to straighten or curl my hair before i film i have to film a video today and i probably have to edit that video today and then hopefully later this afternoon i'm actually gonna be doing reading sprints on my patreon with my friend sarah over from sarah without an h which will be this will be the first time we're ever gonna host reading sprints together so that should be fun and hopefully i can either finish this book on reading sprints this afternoon or get a good chunk of this done going it's much later at night I just finished up doing some reading sprints with Sarah earlier if you saw during the reading sprints that I was eating my salad with a spoon <laughs> it's because Rachel and Obed ran the dishwasher with like all of our forks like every single one of our forks was in the dishwasher so I had to get creative and so I ate my salad with a spoon I don't know how I managed to do it but I did it <laughs> but anyways I wanted to update you because after the sprints I just spent the last hour or two in my room reading this and I just finished it and I had I have, oh, I have such mixed thoughts about this book. I think my rating is gonna land somewhere between three stars, maybe three and a half stars if I'm feeling generous. I don't know, like I wanted to love this so much, but I feel like there was something about this story that I just didn't connect with because I kept saying like, oh, I'm just waiting for it to grip me. I'm just waiting for it to grip me. And I feel like it never really did. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was definitely a point that I hit in this book where I just like flew through the second half of this book. But I feel like it's mostly because this is one of those thrillers that like once you get used to like the writing style and the characters it is a very quick read I felt like a lot of the things that were getting revealed to the main character it was like one of those things that just felt very convenient to the plot like I kept asking myself like why are these characters sharing this information with her <laughs> like it just felt very weird for them to do that like not all of them but some of the characters would share things with her that I'm like wow like they're getting very vulnerable and real with her right away in a way that doesn't feel realistic like it just feels very convenient for the plot that these characters would open up to her and just share this information with her right away and I'm not gonna lie there was 
two different plot twists that I personally did not see coming. Like, I was very surprised. Like, oh my gosh, jaw hanging open. Like, wait, what? So those are the things that I enjoyed the most about this. But then at the same time, there was a third plot twist that I definitely saw coming and I thought was one of the most predictable things. And I feel like that one was supposed to be like the biggest plot twist at the end because that was like one of the final things. And I was like, yeah, like that's been so obvious this whole book. And I also feel like the actual ending of this book it was kind of weak for me. Like, I didn't care for the ending. I wanted such a harder punch from the ending and I just didn't get that. I feel like what this author does really well though is the like misdirection thing, you know? It's like you think that you know what's going on in the story and then you realize that you actually don't know what's going on in the story. And I appreciate that. I feel like this author is really good at doing that. Her book, Local Woman Missing, is definitely my favorite book that I read from this author. That was the only book of hers that I've given five stars to. In the moment, it was pretty fun to read the second half of this book because there were a few surprises that I was like, oh, shit didn't see that coming but like this is such a forgettable thriller in my opinion like I am not going to remember anything about this book in like a week or two tops so I don't know I'm really torn about this I do think I'm still going to be continuing to pick up books from this author in the future because I know she's capable of writing a book that's five stars for me but I think this one ended up being just okay it's just a little bit disappointing because I really thought that this one would end up being something that I would love so hopefully the next book that I read will be a winner <laughs> Hello, I wanted to film a quick update because I have just been laying here all morning reading Bride and I am now already 142 pages in. I'm on chapter 11. You know, this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone because I don't typically read, you know, paranormal romance. You know, like I don't typically read romance books that are about vampires and werewolves. And I feel like so far this has been a little bit more... I don't know, I guess like political than I was anticipating. Not like political, political, but like political in the sense of like learning about this world of like the vampires and the werewolves and like the tension that exists between these groups. Like there's the vampires and the werewolves and the humans and they all coexist in the same area. There's all these kinds of rules, you know, like there's all these kinds of politics. Like her dad is involved in these politics and there's like people in their government who are changing positions and now they don't know if like they're gonna be able to keep the peace between all of the different kinds of things. And so the whole premise of the story is how she, our main protagonist, Misery, she is the daughter of this powerful vampire councilman, but she was actually raised among humans and like her best friend is a human and she really hasn't been around vampires very much, but her father brings her back because he wants her to marry a werewolf because he wants the vampires and the werewolves to still have peace with each other and because this like treaty thing is getting abolished. Like, I don't know. I don't understand the politics completely. Like, I don't really understand. But basically they want her, a vampire, to marry one of the werewolves. They actually want her to marry the Alpha, which is this guy named Lo Moreland. And then she's gonna be living on the werewolf's territory for one year while they're married. So far, it's been a little bit of a slow burn, just kind of like trying to learn about this universe, trying to learn about the vampires and the werewolves and how they're different. It's kind of interesting because I feel like they don't actually know a lot about each other and how they function. Like, it's all just like myth it's like, oh, I've heard about this when I was a kid, but I didn't know if that was real or not. So it is kind of entertaining to see the different things that they can do as like werewolves and vampires and how they're like learning those things about each other. I wasn't really invested in the romance at first, to be honest, because like I just didn't really feel any chemistry between them. But then that changed for me in chapter 10, like the last chapter that I just read. I was like, oh my God, like they were having a cute moment. And I was just like, oh my God, like, am I here for this? Like, do I ship it? <laughs> And so like, I'm definitely changing how I'm feeling. Cause like in the beginning I was feeling kind of bored. Like I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling kind of bored. I was like, man, is this gonna be for me? Like, I don't know. But I do think it's kind of funny though, you know, because in typical, you know, Allie Hazelwood fashion, the love interest man is like this guy that's just so tall. He's so strong. He has like wide shoulders. He's very brooding. You know, he's like the typical 
love interest in an Ali Hazelwood novel. <laughs> like his thighs are basically the size of tree trunks. Yes, yeah, so far it's going well. I mean, I do like that all of the book so far has been told only from her perspective. We don't really get his point of view. We only do get his perspective on like these little like one-liners that are at the top of the chapters, which honestly, like I don't even know if those are even necessary or why they're really there. There's also kind of like a mystery element happening in the story right now because you know, her best friend, Misery's best friend in real life is a human and her name is Serena, but Serena Serena has recently gone missing and she thinks for some reason she thinks that this husband guy like the alpha werewolf dude might be involved with why her friend went missing so there is kind of like a mystery element with her best friend being missing that I'm kind of intrigued by so I don't know we'll have to see where the story goes it's only about 1 30 in the afternoon right now I think I actually might head to the gym just so I can like be on the treadmill and walk and be doing something while listening to this on audio and then I also might swing by the library to pick up some library holds and just like get a few things done and then later tonight uh, me and my sister were gonna be going over to my parents house because my mom wanted to watch the love is blind reunion with us and so we're gonna be going over there tonight to watch that with her tonight and it should be a good time at the gym and shit. Like, this is getting so good. Like, am I obsessed with this? I don't know. I'm really loving it now. <laughs> Is the next afternoon but I wanted to update you because I have just finished reading Bride. I've been laying in bed reading this all afternoon. <laughs> so last night I ended up going over to my parents house because we watched the Love is Blind reunion with my mom. With Trevor, that whole situation with Trevor made me very uncomfortable. Like I don't really feel like he deserved all of that. Then also like Jeremy, like oh my gosh ew, Jeremy gives me such red flag. Like ew, he gives me the ick every time I see him, every time he talks. I'm like oh my god. But overall I thought it was a pretty good reunion episode especially compared to like previous seasons. I thought this one was pretty well done. I am so here for Clay and AD. Like, I just absolutely adore them. Like, I want it to work out so badly. But anyways, I did want to update because I have just finished reading Bride and like, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. This is definitely one of those situations where like, I completely could understand why everybody else is obsessed with this book. Like, I get it. I just don't know if this book was like my cup of tea personally. So I was really excited for this book because I do love the way that Allie Hazelwood writes her romance books. And I feel like this one for me was no different. Like I was really here for the romance. I was into it. Yesterday I filmed a quick update because there was a scene that I was reading while I was literally at the gym where it was like making me blush. Like it was so cute, the tension between them. There were some scenes in this book, like the early, the early, early steamy scenes between them that were just kind of like hints at something steamy to come. I was like here for it. I was front row seated. It was so cute. You know, like it was steamy. It was cute. It was exactly the kind of thing that I look forward to in Allie Hazelwood romance books. Like I was loving it. I was here for it. But then shortly after when they actually like get together, I feel like they got together personally a little bit too early on in the book for me because then I just started to get bored with like the second half of this book. I also feel like there was something that was so obvious to me that was not made obvious to our main character. And it was kind of frustrating just like waiting for her to like realize shit and put two things together. I just feel like that aspect of the story, it took a little bit too long. <laughs> There were definitely some scenes in the second half that were just so drawn out and just so lengthy. Like, I feel like this book could have been cut down because the story's almost 400 pages. I don't think it necessarily needed to be that long. And to be honest, even though I was like really invested in the romance, like the romance is what I was here for in this book, but there is a lot of like politics in this book that kind of feels like it's going over my head a little bit. Like, I just don't care about it. It makes the book feel quite a bit more fantasy to me and fantasy is just not my genre. Not that this is like 
very heavy fantasy or anything. It's just there's a lot of politics between the vampires and the wares. And like so much of that was like a huge part of the plot of this book that I just didn't really care for any of that personally. But I really did like the romance between these two. Like I thought that they were so cute. Like there were several moments where I was like kicking my feet and shit. Like they were so adorable. I also feel like as far as the, uh, you know, smut scenes go and the like werewolf dynamics, this kind of felt like reading fan fiction. Like what the <laughs> I didn't know that there would be uh, certain things included in this. And I just don't know if like the werewolf thing is for me, to be honest. I feel like I've tried to read a few books now that are like this paranormal romance. Like vampires, I don't mind as much. Like for some reason, the paranormal romance with the vampires, I don't tend to mind as much. It's like fine. But when we get into the werewolf territory with like the whole like Omegaverse stuff and like alphas and like all this language that you have to learn, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? I'm just not as into the werewolf stuff, I think, as other people seem to be. The ending of this book, I feel like it definitely sets itself up to be a series. Like, it sounds like there could be potential for a sequel at the end of this book. And I'm not sure if a sequel is something I would want to read at this point or not. Like, I'm really not sure. Because I do think there's a lot of potential in this series. Like, I like the way that Allie Hazelwood writes the romances. It's just this universe. I don't know if I'm necessarily super invested in this universe. I know I definitely have the unpopular opinion with this one, but I think for me, it's around a three star, maybe like a three and a half star if I think about it more. It's just hard to rate something like this because I know it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Like paranormal romance is not something that I read super often and I never know if paranormal romance is gonna be my thing or not, but I keep wanting to give it a try, especially when it's from an author like Ali Hazelwood who I've really enjoyed in the past. But it's almost like every single time that I read paranormal romance, I have the same issue with it where it's like, I really liked the romance, but some of the other aspects I just didn't care that much about. I'm so glad that I finally read Bride because this book has been all the rage right now on the internet and everybody else seems to be absolutely obsessed with this, so take my review with a grain of salt. to update you because I have started reading a love song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams and I'm now 106 pages in. So last night I did end up going out with my friends, Josh and Katie. It was so much fun. We went to this brewing company restaurant that I've never been to before. It was amazing. I had a raspberry rhubarb cider. It was kind of sour, but it was so good. And then we also went bowling afterwards. It was so much fun. And then this morning, um, I really wanted to get out of the apartment today because it's actually 70 degrees outside today for the first time in like months months. And so because we have such nice like sunny weather today, I was like, I really want to get out. I was going to go to a coffee shop, but then I decided that I was more in the mood for like Red Bull. So I just went to one of my local spots and I got a Red Bull charger and then I went to the park and I was able to read in the park for a little bit. You know, at first it was so awkward sitting in that park because it was so deserted. Like there was nobody there and there was just this van that kept driving back and forth, back and forth. And I was getting so nervous being there by myself. I was like, oh my God, I'm literally about to get abducted. But then like shortly after that, like literally 10 or 15 minutes later, it was swarming warmed with children. Like so many families were rolling in. I was like, what is going on? Like everybody just came at the same time. So then it got kind of crowded and I decided to leave because I didn't want to be surrounded by the screaming children anymore. But anyways, I have been reading this pretty much all morning and I am obsessed. Like I don't want to jinx it, but this is giving me all of the five star energy so far. <laughs> I've already started like tabbing and annotating. That's part of the reason why I wanted to come home because I didn't bring a pen with me to the park. I only brought my tabs. And so since I've gotten home, I've just started under 
underlining every little thing that I love about this so far. And so in this story, we're following this character named Ricky Wild, and she is a daughter in like a really rich family, but she's more of like an artistic type. She's definitely the more like misunderstood type in her family. And she also deals with some pretty severe social anxiety, which I am finding her to be so relatable for those reasons. I love this one quote that was kind of talking about her personality where it says, Ricky's prettiness was mainstream, unchallenging. She had a sweetly approachable smile and sparkly doe eyes. People expected her to be palatable, not a woman with paralyzing social anxiety around anyone she hadn't known for 20 years. Oh my gosh, that is so freaking relatable to me. I'm also just kind of obsessed with the way that this book is written so far because, you know, a lot of this book is taking place in New York City. I'm just really loving Ricky as a main character because I love the fact that she is a little bit socially awkward. She has this really close friend though named Tuesday, who is definitely like the more kind of outgoing, like extroverted type of friend that I feel like really balances her out very well. And her best friend is actually an actress. So I feel like that's super cool. But Ricky herself is opening a flower shop in New York. And it's so cute because the flower shop is called Wild Things, but it's wild, kind of like spelt like her last name, which I just think that's so cute. And so there's been a lot of talk about like her opening this flower shop and how her business is going and, you know, the New York City vibes. There was this really great quote about New York where she said, it was one of those golden New York afternoons when summer overstayed its welcome. Sunshine trickled through the tree-lined streets, dappling sidewalks and illuminating the city in warmth. The day felt enchanted and Ricky was home. Like, oh my god, this is gonna make me want to go back to New York. I also just feel like this book in general has been so beautifully written so far. This is like from the first chapter when she's having a conversation with her grandmother and she said, to me, love is like listening to an album. Some people skip to their favorite songs and ignore the rest. Other people listen to the entire album over and over until it's familiar and cherished and they know every note by heart. He was music I could listen to forever. <laughs> is that not so beautiful? Like, God, this book is just, it's so stunningly written so far. Something that I wasn't really expecting from this book is that in almost every other alternate chapter, because, you know, Ricky's story takes place in 2023 and 2024, so hers is like a present day storyline, but then we do get a perspective from this guy named Breeze, and we get his perspective from back in the 1920s. So his chapters have been taking place between like 1923 to like 1927, and he is a piano player and an artist who has moved to New York City. And so his chapters also have like the New York vibes to it as well, but it takes place in the 1920s. So the timeline is quite a bit different. It's like a hundred years apart. And I will say that I'm slightly less invested in his chapters than I am with Ricky. Like I am so obsessed with Ricky's chapters. So every time we get to his chapters, I'm always kind of like waiting to get back to Ricky's chapters. And then in Ricky's timeline, there's this random guy that she meets that she feels like really connected with and she can't really explain it. And so I'm really curious to see like what this guy is gonna mean for the story. Like, is this guy the love interest? Like her love interest? Cause she just keeps talking about how she feels like connected to him in a way that she doesn't fully understand. So it's almost like maybe they were together in a past life or something and they don't even know. This is like the perfect time to read this book because it keeps talking about how it's taking place between February and March and like the leap year day is when like things happen because they keep saying, oh, like magical things happen on the leap year, like on February 29th, which is cool because you know, I'm reading this in March right now, but we did actually have a leap year this year. So like, that's really cool and really random. Okay, hello, it is the next afternoon. It's a Sunday. Last night I hosted my, you know, Taylor Swift Eras Tour watch party. It was literally so much fun. I wanted to update you because I've just been laying in bed almost all afternoon reading this and I'm now 208 pages in. So I wanted to update you before I finish it because sadly I'm feeling like I'm having a change of heart with like how I'm feeling about this. You know, because yesterday I was raving. You know, I was raving. I was saying it had five star energy. Like I was really connecting, but I feel like ever since the romance has really been like introduced in this book in the last like 100 pages or so, I am not really as on board with the romance as I thought I was. Cause I don't know, for some reason to me now, it's reading so insta-love. It's like these two just like see each other and they just feel connected. I don't know, it's reading so insta-love to me. And I know there's probably a reason for that, but I still, I don't know, I'm not as obsessed with the romance as I was yesterday. Like the feelings that I had about this yesterday, I'm just not really feeling it today. I just feel like their romance, it's happening very quickly. And I just don't really feel the same chemistry that I felt with them at the very beginning of the story. 
story. Like things are just progressing very quickly with them and I'm like, oh, um, okay. I also didn't like that we were starting to get more perspectives. Like we ended up getting the perspective of her friend Tuesday, which I was like, okay, this feels random. Like I don't need anybody else's perspectives. Cause I really liked following from Ricky's point of view the most because she's the character that I'm connecting with the most. So like, I didn't really care to get her best friend's point of view. And then now we're also getting the perspective of, you know, her love interest Ezra, which is like this mysterious man that she keeps seeing everywhere. His name is Ezra. And now we're getting his perspective too, which I also don't really care for. We still also do get the guy Breeze, like his perspective is from the past, like a hundred years ago. So we're getting his point of view as well. And the only point of view I'm really connecting with is Ricky's. Like she's the only point of view that I really care for because I'm really connecting with her her as a character, but the rest of them, I don't really care for their perspectives. And then also, I just got to the point where I think there was supposed to be like kind of like a plot twist. I don't know, it was at the end of chapter 15, about 200 pages in, it's like right where I just finished reading. And I feel like that was supposed to be a plot twist of sorts, but honestly, like I thought that was the most obvious thing. Like it, I was really expecting this to happen, but I also feel like the way that it ended up happening, it was so anticlimactic. Like I was expecting something a little bit more interesting. I'm trying to be so vague because I'm not trying to spoil anything, but I feel like the plot twist, like the reveal itself and like why certain things are happening, it's a lot less interesting than I was hoping for. I don't know how to talk about this without getting into spoilers. So I think I'm gonna try to finish this book this afternoon because I only have about a hundred pages left. So I think I'm gonna try to finish it. And then maybe after I finish it, maybe I will talk about some spoilers just in case you wanna know like specifically what I'm talking about. But I'm feeling just a little bit disappointed in where this story could be going. I'm not having as much fun with it anymore and I'm not as connected with it. I'm starting to get annoyed with the characters. It's feeling a little bit insta-lovey now. Okay, hello, it has been about two hours and I just finished reading a love song for Ricky Wilde. And the ending of this book was very solid. Like I actually really liked the last chapter and the epilogue of this book so much that it almost moved me to tears. I literally almost just cried over this book. So now I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, like I don't know how I'm gonna rate this. <laughs> because at the beginning it was giving me five star vibes. And then for a while there, I was like, oh my gosh, is this down to like a three star? Like I'm just not really connecting with like a lot of the middle of this book. I just found it to be so slow and kind of predictable. And then I was wasn't connecting with the characters as much, but then the ending of the book was really great. So I don't know, I feel like maybe this one's gonna end up being around like a three and a half stars for me. I really did love the New York like atmosphere and the vibes of New York in this. I thought it was so well done. It was very atmospheric in that way. I also did love the writing in general. Like I feel like Tia Williams, she has such a beautiful writing style. Like it's the kind of writing that really like triggers all of your senses and you feel like you can like taste and smell like everything that she's talking about. So I do think she's an incredible writer writer, even though this book started to lose me a little bit in the halfway point. I did want to talk about a few spoilers for this. I mean, I hate to talk about spoilers since this is like such a new release book, but I also feel like I need to talk about spoilers with this one because there are some things that I just, I have to explain why I'm feeling this way about this book. So if you don't want any spoilers for this one, just skip ahead a few minutes. I'll put a huge spoiler warning on the screen while I'm talking about spoilers. But the plot twist in this book that I was referring to that I didn't really think was a big plot twist is that Breeze, like his point of view from the past is actually Ezra in the present day. And it turns out that he's immortal. And like, that's kind of like the plot twist, which honestly, I did not think that that was like a big plot twist. I don't know if it was supposed to be or not. I couldn't tell. But the way this author set it up, it was like supposed to be like leading up to this huge reveal that was like, and that is how Ezra Walker became immortal that night. And I don't know if it's because this book on Goodreads got tagged with magical realism, but I was kind of expecting there to be something like that. I don't know why as soon as we got Breeze and his point of view, my immediate thought was that this is Ezra in the present day. Like I just immediately connected those two. So I wasn't really surprised by that. And then I also just felt not totally satisfied by the way that he became immortal. I just thought the writing was so lazy there. Like I wanted more from that scene because we find out that the only reason he became immortal is because this girl that he was with, she ended up like cursing him and then like jumping off the roof and killing herself. And because she like sacrificed herself, I guess he got cursed to be immortal. So he's been living for like a hundred years. And now that he's fallen in love with this girl, Ricky, I guess now the curse has been passed on to her because Ricky's going to die on the next like leap year day 
day. At least I think that's how the curse works. I don't know. I don't read a lot of, you know, books that involve curses because it's not really my thing. Like, I don't really care about curses. And the fact that he was immortal was interesting, but it was also kind of predictable. Like, I just really saw that coming. And I just thought it was kind of cheesy. I don't know. The way the ex-girlfriend just, like, jumped off the roof and she was like, you're cursed. Like, I just wanted more from that scene. I don't know. But then at the very end of the book, which this is, like, major spoilers, by the way, but at the very end of the book, I really didn't see it coming how, you know, that night they're, like, preparing for Ricky to, like, die the next morning because this, the curse is still happening to them. But then her grandmother, Miss Della, who was, like, a really cute character throughout the book, she ended up sacrificing herself so that Ricky could live because Miss Della, like, it was revealed that she was, like, dying anyways, so she didn't have very long left to live. But still, like, that scene was so beautiful because they were like, when did she die? And they were like, last night before midnight, she took her own life. And then, you know, Ricky was able to wake up the next day and go about her normal life when they thought because of the curse she was supposed to die that day. It was just a really beautiful moment. It literally almost brought me to tears because she like left this letter for them, of course, and it was like so beautiful. I just, I don't know if I could get on board with the romance in this one. So I think I definitely preferred Seven Days in June over this one, which is unfortunate because I really thought this one could be a new favorite. Oh well, I'm still glad that I read it. I mean, a three and a half stars is not a bad rating by any means. Like I definitely still enjoyed this. It just didn't really live up to all the expectations that I had for it. And you know, it's so frustrating because this vlog, I just feel like has been going off the rails a little bit because all of these books that I'm reading for this vlog are some of my most anticipated books. And the fact that I've just been having a bunch of like three to three and a half stars for this video is no good. <laughs> so all I have left now to read is The Fury. And I'm very scared to read this one because I feel like this is either gonna be a huge win or a huge miss for me. been such an incredible and busy day so far. Early this morning, me and Lexi, we finally announced this Patreon exclusive readathon that we're going to be doing together. We're going to be co-hosting this one in April and it's going to be all based around the new Taylor Swift album. It's going to be called the Tortured Readers Department Readathon. Dude, I'm so excited. We finally announced it on Patreon this morning and then this morning I also had a Trova Trip meeting with my coordinator, which went really well. If you haven't heard, I'm going to be going to Italy in October and I'd love for you to join me. I have all the information linked in the description if you want to see all the details. And then this morning I drove down to downtown Bellingham because there's this uh, coffee slash like bagel shop that my sister's fiance Obed, he kept telling me that he thinks that I would really like this spot in downtown Bellingham because it's a good like bagel breakfast sandwich kind of spot and they have coffee there. And I had never been before and I never even heard of it to be honest. And so I drove down here and it was so freaking cute. Oh my god, I adored it. I actually just decided to get a dirty chai, you know, which is basically just a chai latte with a shot of espresso in it. That is like my go-to drink recently and it was delicious. The breakfast sandwich was so good and that place was so cute in there. Like it was such a good vibe. While I was in the coffee shop, I just sat in there and I got a head start on reading The Fury. Dude, oh my gosh, this is going well so far. So this is the one that I was probably the most excited and the most nervous to read for this vlog. So while I was sitting in the coffee shop, I got 110 pages in. I actually just hit act two in this book. And what's really interesting is that we're following a character named Elliot who is like narrating the story for us. It so reminds me of that book, Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. Like it is very much like that where like the narrator's like breaking the fourth wall and talking directly to you as the reader. It's definitely got that going for it, which I actually, I really do like this narration style. I think it's very fun. And right at the beginning of the book, you know, he's telling us that, oh, this is not a whodunit. This is a why done it. So it's really interesting because right at the beginning, we are introduced to a handful of characters 
characters and I'm not gonna lie the beginning was a little bit intimidating because I was like oh my gosh I was taking notes on my phone trying to keep track of like who everybody is because there were quite a lot of characters introduced right away but the main character that this story is kind of about is this woman named Lana and she is this like very famous well-known actress I believe now he said she's in her like late 40s or early 50s like she's retired at this point but she's still like such a household name like she's a really big actress and it almost seems like everyone in their group is kind of like obsessed with her or at least that's the vibe that I'm getting like even Elliot the narrator he's like I'm convinced that we're soulmates even though I'm pretty sure they're only just like close friends but Lana ends up inviting everyone to go on this trip to this Greek island and so most of the book is taking place on this Greek island which I can just say that this book has been so atmospheric so far it really does feel like it takes place in Greece on an island so I am loving the atmosphere so far it kind of is reminding me a little bit of like the White Lotus with the whole like cast of unlikable characters but the beachy vibe is there and like now murder is getting introduced into the story so like it's definitely giving me white lotus vibes too which is awesome because i fucking love white lotus it's like one of my favorite shows ever i'm not gonna lie the beginning was a little bit intimidating just trying to get a grasp on like all these different characters and who's who but now that we're about 100 pages in i have a really better idea of like who all these characters are and they're really easy to tell apart now i'm also listening to this one on audio by the way and the audiobook is fantastic like the narrator is so good on this audiobook i I love that this character Elliot who's like the narrator of the book I love that he's like constantly breaking the fourth wall and like talking to you as the reader and be like okay I didn't tell you the whole truth or the way that he admits to you as the reader that he like might be making certain characters look bad just because that's his perception of them which I do really like like I don't know there's something about this I'm just really drawn to the writing style so far I can see how this would not work for everyone because so far it has been a very slow burn but I actually really appreciate that about this I just decided to drive down to one of my favorite parks in the area that's like right on the water because this park was literally like less than five minutes from that coffee shop so I was like while I'm down here in Bellingham like I might as well come to the water right and dude I'm so glad I found a parking spot holy shit there was like barely any parking here because everyone and their mom is out here today even though it's a Monday afternoon but I think it's actually because it's a really nice day out today it's sunny it feels really good out it's like 60 degrees Fahrenheit it's actually warmed up quite a bit in Washington over these last like three days <laughs> Many hours have passed and I finished reading The Fury. I actually finished it hours and hours ago and I've just been sitting thinking about it all night because I haven't felt this torn about how I feel about a book in such a long time. I'm so unsure, like right now I am so unsure how I want to rate this book because part of me in my gut is saying that it's like a three star but then I'm also like maybe it's a three and a half star maybe it's a four star I just have such mixed feelings about it I tried to think on it and sit on it all afternoon I talked about the book with my sister because usually when I talk about the book out loud it really helps me like figure out how I'm feeling about it I read some reviews and I just I still don't know there were some things that I really loved about this and then there were some things that I didn't really care for. It's just one of those books where I can really see why people are absolutely obsessed with this and why they would think it's brilliant. And then I also, at the same time, I can see why people would absolutely hate this and why people would want to give it one star. Like I really can clearly see both sides. I think it really just comes down to if this kind of writing style works for you or if you like this type of narration in your thrillers. I also, just for the record, I don't really think 
think that this book should be considered a thriller. I think it's much more of a mystery than a thriller. I'm just so torn over how I feel about the narration style in general because I feel like sometimes I really enjoyed it and then sometimes it definitely got on my nerves or like it was a little bit repetitive. Like for example, you know, like this book is told in five different acts and the last time that I updated you, I had only read the first act so I was still like very early in the book and even though the beginning was, you know, technically slow, I actually really liked the first act a lot. I liked the setup of all the characters. I liked the island vibes right off the bat. I just thought it was really fun. I thought this cast of characters, you know, like they're all very unlikable for different reasons, but I was having a fun time. But then the thing about the writing style is how like there will be kind of like a shocking little reveal at the end of each act. And then at the beginning of the next act, this narrator, you know, he'll be like, I know you didn't see it coming, but in order to fully understand this, let me send you back like 20 years and let me re-explain things to you in a different way. And it's like, we would get different pieces of information whenever it was convenient for us to then know about it. He was almost like withholding information from the reader just to create more mystery around the situation. I don't know if I'm explaining this in any way that makes sense, but sometimes the writing in this really worked for me. And then at other times I was like, bro, like get on with it, you know? Because I do think this narrator, Elliot, you know, he has a tendency to like make things a little bit more dramatic, I think, than they need to be. Like he'll be like, oh, you thought that was the climax of the story? Just wait, reader, you haven't seen anything yet. But then like the actual climax of the story, like I don't know if it lived up to the hype that this guy was like building around it, you know? It's just so hard for me to rate this though because when I look at this story, yes, it was so freaking entertaining. I read this whole thing in one afternoon. I could not put it down. It was hard for me to take my eyes away from the page because I was so invested. And I do think that this has the same like readability to me as his other books. Like I was just as invested. I was in it the entire time. And then there were some twists towards the end that I actually really liked. I didn't see some of them coming. I also really liked the final twist, like on the very last page. I really enjoyed that final twist. I like how this book is connected in the universe of Alex Michaelitis books. Like I like how it connected to The Silent Patient, but I also think it has a little bit of a spoiler for The Silent Patient if you haven't read that one. So like that's also like not that cool. I especially feel though that like for the ending of this book, it's one of those endings where like you really, really have to like suspend your disbelief about certain things in order to enjoy it. And I just can't decide if it's something that I enjoyed or not. <laughs> like I really think this is gonna be one of those books where I have to like let it sit for a while. Like I have to let the story sit with me to figure out how I really feel about this. I'm almost like wondering like, am I trying to gaslight myself into thinking that I enjoyed this more than I did just because I was so excited for this one and because I wanted it to be a five star so desperately. But I also at the same time, like I can't deny how much fun I had reading this book today. And it's like, it's one of those things where I'm like, what does it really come down to? Like, how do I really rate, you know, mystery thriller books like this? I really think for me, this is gonna land somewhere around three and a half stars. Like that's what feels right to me right now. But I'm still, I know that I'm gonna be thinking about this book for a long time. But I do know just based off my gut feeling, like I didn't like this one as much as I liked The Maidens and The Silent Patient. And that's unfortunate to say out loud because you know, I really did have high hopes that this one could be a new favorite, but I don't think it's a new favorite. I think this book suffers from like this main character. He thinks he's a lot more clever than he actually is. And that kind of drives me crazy. I really do think though, if you're the type of person who really loves like an Agatha Christie classic feeling like who done it, you might enjoy this. I also think if you liked the book Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, like if you like that style of narrator where he's like addressing the reader directly, I think you're either also going to love this book or you're gonna read this book and think that it's like a gimmicky, almost like copycat version of that book. I am really glad that this book ended up being a book troop book club pick for the month of March because I do think there will be so much to talk about with this book. And I'm just really curious to see how everybody feels about the different things that happen in this book because there really is so much that happens in the last third of this book that I can't wait to like break it down in the live show. And hopefully by the time of the live show, I'll actually get a better idea for like my rating and how I feel about this because right now my head just feels like it's spinning. I don't really know what to think. But if you would like to tune into the live show, I'll have the link down below that you can save. It's gonna be happening on Saturday, March 30th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern. And I'm gonna be joined by my friends, Gabby and Nakia. Wow, that concludes this reading vlog. What a freaking disappointing reading vlog. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't disappointing, but like the fact that I read four highly anticipated books and they were all somewhere between like three or three and a half stars probably. I don't know. I kind of feel sad by that. Like that actually makes me sad. I didn't have a single win in this whole video. I mean, granted, I didn't hate anything that I read. So like, that's pretty cool. But like, 
what the heck is going on? I feel like 2024 has been off to a bumpy start with like the newer releases. Like some of them are absolutely hitting and then some of them are just really not. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but if you've read any of these four books, I would love to know what you think of them. And also just in general, like how is your new year going so far with like 2024 releases? Have you found any new favorites for books that have come out this year or have they mostly been misses for you? I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!